we go over the hundred dollar mark i am going to delete my youtube channels <laughs> i just threw my rod in half dude he just tried to hit a top water got him got him gotta land him got him got him come out of there always oh, snag all right, folks, before we proceed in today's video, I want to give you a special word from the video sponsor, Black Buffalo. Guys, I have said it before on this channel. I'm going to say it again right now. This right here, Black Buffalo, is the best hands down tobacco free dip alternative on the market today. I've had them all, I've tried them all, I've done research and they are by far the best. There's so many of you fine folks out there just like me, whether you are a veteran, whether you are an outdoorsman, whether you're a hunter, fisher person, it does not matter. A lot of us share the same addiction and that is to tobacco products, right? I was a smoker for like four or five years when I was in the army. I was able to kick that, but then I was chewing tobacco every day. It was a disgusting habit. Now I have completely made the switch to tobacco free and I hope to one day make the switch to their new product which is zero now this bad boy right here actually has zero tobacco and zero nicotine so this is just the habit that's why I love this company they offer this as a product as well as the real thing so this one right here has actually got the pharmaceutical grade nicotine it's got the leafy greens that they have dried out no tobacco guys you open these cans just like the real thing when you open it up and look inside it looks just like the real thing they make pouches a lot of these other companies don't make pouches as an option they have all different types of flavors it's just hands down the best option there is out there so whether or not you're trying to kick tobacco or whether or not you're just trying to kick nicotine all together black buffalo products are going to help you reach that goal now if you guys are 21 years of age or older i would highly recommend you guys click the link right at the top of the description go to their website at least and check them out but if you actually want to purchase something use code lojo22 all one word because you're going to get 22 percent off your next order and it's 2022 so what better time than now if you're trying to kick your bad habit do it right now great company guys i love working for them i'm gonna be working with them all year probably forever because i love them that much now back to today's video what is up folks welcome back to another video now we were standing in front of a bass pro shop we're actually in like mobile alabama right now regardless of where we are we found out they have a bass pro shops and in my experience every time i visit a city that has a bass pro i've got to go in there because i don't have one near where i live i just never get the chance to check it out so we thought to ourselves, why not take this opportunity? We're already here. Let's film a really cool fishing challenge. You guys have been loving the Bass Pro content that me and Norm did previously, and hopefully you guys will enjoy this just as much. Let's get inside first, then we will reveal what type of challenge we're doing. But guys, make sure if you enjoy these videos, you're smashing the thumbs up button. Make sure you're commenting video ideas down below. And finally, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with the bell notification enabled. That way you guys don't miss an upload. Let's get inside. All right, folks, we made it inside. Now I was talking to the guy up front. Okay, there's always a guy up front, you know, trying to get you to sign up for the credit card of the store or whatever. And he gave me a kind of an idea for today's video. He was handing out $100 gift cards, right? If you signed up for a credit card. Now we're definitely not gonna sign up for a credit card because I mean, come on. But then I was like, you know, for $100, you could probably get everything you need to go fishing, right? I mean, wouldn't you say so, Andrew? I would think so. I mean, if you gave me a dollar amount that I had to stay in and I could get a rod, reel, line, lures, like the whole nine yards, $100 would probably be as low as I would go in a place like Bass Pro. You know what I mean? The prices are kind of mid-range to high. It's not like Walmart. Let's make this a $100, but you have to buy everything, taxes included, okay? Normally we take the easy route. We don't include taxes. Today we are. If we go over the hundred dollar mark i am going to delete my youtube channel so we better be on our p's and q's today boys guys i'm seeing a lot of rods in the store oh my lord i'm seeing a lot of rods in the store but what i'm not seeing is a lot of affordable rods i always like to start these challenges with the rod because the rod and the reel are going to take a lot of your budget right off the rip so you gotta find something i mean i'm seeing a lot of 59.99, 79.99, 99.99. Obviously, none of those are going to help us because they're just not going to fit in the budget. We're going to have to find a rod in like the 20 to 30 dollar range to even have a chance at this. Guys, I think I found the winner. Okay, not only is it cost efficient, so it's 29.99. Well, with tax, we're looking at like what 33, 34 dollars, yeah. something like that. Not killing our budget, but check this thing out. This looks like a regular rod, right? I mean, it's a 6.6. It's a medium heavy. It's a looks like a Bass Pro brand, but what's interesting about it is it's called the whooping stick. <laughs> That's right. The whooping stick, not the whooping stick, the whooping stick. I 
have to get that just because of the name. And plus it's a 6.6 six medium heavy, which means you can throw just about any lure on it. I mean, you can set the hook good. You can put a casting reel on here. So let's just say we spent like $35 to try to keep those taxes in mind. Because at the end of this thing, I'm gonna show you guys a receipt that's less than $100. Now let's see if we can find a reel. All right, so we kind of ran into an issue here. So the budget is going by really fast. So basically the cheapest bait casting reel we have found is gonna be this Abu guy right here for $49.99. Now if you factor in tax, we're looking at about $55. Now if you guys do some quick math with me real quick, 55 plus like 30, let's just say 33 for the rye with tax is like $88. That leaves us with $12, including tax, to buy lures and line and hooks and everything. But here's where things get interesting. Our good friend Foster over here has brought something to my attention that is literally going to save the video, okay? If we buy a reel from Bass Pro, they will fill it up with complimentary line, okay? They will put monofilament on there, which means we don't have to use any of our budget for line. That is literally gonna save us. So we're gonna get this reel right here, let them just fill it up with like 15 pound mono or just something like that. And we can use that last $12 to get terminal tackle and some type of lure or just something to actually catch the fish. But we might be able to actually do this thanks to Foster. All right guys, I hope y'all uh, are ready to go to math class today because we got a lot of stuff going on. So this was actually the display reel. So this was the last reel that they had. Also not an Abu Garcia, my mistake. It's a Bass Pro brand, it just looked like an Abu. But they give 10% off for the display model. So we're saving 10%, but sales tax is 10%. So hella confusing. But now we need lures, basically. And we've got about 10 to $15 to do it. We've explored this entire store, and the cheapest soft plastic lure that I have seen has been this yumdinger right here for $2.99. It's watermelon red. It's a stick bait. It's like just like a Cinco, just like a lunker log. This is the lure to catch fish if you're just not sure how to catch fish. So $2.99 with tax, even with tax, it's like $4 at the absolute most. So we've probably still got another $8 to $10 left to get terminal tackle. And I'd love to get at least one more lure. So we've moved on to terminal tackle now because I'm just trying to see how much I'm going to have left here. But by far the cheapest hook that I've found 219 true turn blood red he's like two aught and it just says worm hook it just looks like a normal shank it's a normal hook basically but we can't get picky on a challenge like that so that's 219 with tax there can't be more than four dollars we've still got five or six bucks correct me if i'm wrong to buy one more lure let's try to find like a hard bait or a wire bait or something that's not a soft plastic guys i know i'm about to get roasted here but i i found a buzz bait that <laughs> that fits in Fits in the price. Look at this little beautiful booyah. This is like a pond buzz bait right here. This is $4.99, but check out the color. I just had to get it just for the color. And I think it's gonna fit in the budget. It's $4.99, it's a micro buzz bait. So you're not intimidating as many fish. You could even catch like a brim on these. I've had brim hit buzz baits before, and I'm pretty sure I've caught brim on buzz bait. So it's not even just a bass lure. So boom, that is what $100 looked like at Bass Pro. And that was without buying our own line. So holy moly inflation am i right all right folks this is the time in the video where we check out a see where we are on budget and then b get back to the house figure out where we're going to go fishing because at the end of this we've got to put all this stuff together and make it catch fish to show you guys anybody can catch fish if you have a budget you can still get it done see you guys back at the house all right let's get all of our stuff laid out here all right, folks, check it out right there, $90. So we actually had an extra military discount in there too because I'm a veteran. So we ended up killing this challenge, honestly. $90. Not too bad. Boom. Got the new crappie max. Crappy max. Oh, man, our main man tied up the line and everything. That guy was a freaking goat. This whole challenge was basically made possible by the employees of Bass Pro Shop. So thank you, folks, for being so dang cool. All right, got our little nightstick here, and we got our crappy master. <laughs> we got some things going on here. Oh, it's not the nightstick, it's the whooping stick. The nightstick was the tiny reel that neighbor Daryl lent me one time to go kayak fishing out of. Duh. Well, here's the thing. There's not going to be a whole lot of challenge, I don't think, in catching a fish off of a watermelon red yumdinger. But what there will be a challenge is catching one off of a purple buzz bait. So let's try to do that first. I feel like that's going to be the harder of the two by far. Look at this thing. Oh, my gosh. Not only is that the cutest buzz bait of all time, but it's uh, actually might get bit. It looks kind of cool. I think I am gonna put like half of this little yumdinger on here 
just as like a trailer just to give it some extra weight because it is a micro lure so and it gives something for the bass to key in on too to like to actually attack and hit so maybe if we just took like the back quarter of it like that and we send that thing through like so oh man that's kind of money right there I know it doesn't look like much with that lunker log on there, but it does give the fish something to key in on. The wind is also gusting at a solid 64 miles an hour. Oh man, this, this combo is so heavy in my hand. This rod is so top heavy, but we're gonna be able to lay the absolute hammer on fish. That is for sure. We go ahead and crank down the drag because mono stretches and it's 15 pound line. So we shouldn't have much of a problem there. I'm gonna try to get this reel nice and adjusted too, as good adjusted as I can. I'll hit it with like some halfway breaks or something like that. It is really windy, so we're gonna have to be careful. I don't wanna throw a massive backlash right out of the gate. Let's peel the old label off. I know some of you guys get triggered when we leave the labels on there. Lord, Bass Pro likes packaging. Let's put the rest of this stuff in our pocket for now because you might need to make a bait switch at some point in time. I want to use some of those red hooks too. On this bridge, we actually don't fish this spot very often, but you guys can see this is a big creek that feeds off of one of the small lakes that we fish. And this area is a big spawning area in this lake. Now, I don't know how a buzz bait's going to work in that scenario, but let's just see how our combo casts, first of all. Oh, that was almost a uh, bird's nesty. That was almost a nesty. Gonna have to keep on adjusting on that one. In other news, this buzz bait looks fire in the water. I mean, it looks fantastic. Even though it's purple, it still looks very edible. We should be able to see bass, but I'm not really seeing anything. I hope we didn't miss the spawn completely. It's a little late in the season, but there's always those late spawners you can count on, you know? Guys, this rod is so stinking stiff. I mean, when I when I set the hook from this elevated position, there's a 100% chance that bass is gonna fly for at least a second. All right, folks, sorry, but we actually had to change fishing venues because the wind was so bad. Not one, we would have never caught any fish, and two, you wouldn't have heard a word we said, so we had to retreat back to the backyard pond where the wind is only gusting at a solid 34 instead of 68 so we're still going to complete this challenge though all right still got the old buzz set up the exact same way and i'm thinking my backyard oh oh my gosh i was about to say no way i just got stuck in the fence but i almost just did i think the backyard pond fish might appreciate this little buzz bait <laughs> it's so tiny it's like a little toy buzz bait it's so funny looking Whoa! <laughs> I just threw my rod in half. Are you kidding me? I did not know this was a two-piece. Did you even know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jeez, guys. I guess it wasn't locked on there too good. The old whooping stick became a much shorter whooping stick. I have I don't think I've ever done that before in my life. Yeah, me either, dude. What the okay, it's a it's a two-piece whooping stick. <laughs> there you go. That's what our mom used to threaten us with back here in the south is a two-piece whooping whooping stick. I'd really love to have something with like a swimming tail on the back of it, because there's not much action coming off that stick bait. I was hoping it wouldn't matter. Hello, goats. How'd you guys get out? Oh yeah, I'll let y'all out. Just be quiet, no uh, no loud bleeding, please. I know it's the middle of the day, guys, but here's the thing. Don't ever underestimate the buzz bait. The moment you do, it will prove you wrong. Got him on the buzz. I called it. <laughs> The backyard fish love it, baby. Look at that mouthful of purple mini buzz bait right in the top of the mouth. Now, not much of a blow up at all, was it? No. You probably didn't even hear it. You were looking down that long lens <laughs> with the with the worm trailer right there. Hey, you got to use what you got. That is not a very big fish, folks, but it is a nice, healthy young lad who's probably got some fry. Oh, he's probably got oh. He's probably got some babies out there somewhere that he was trying to protect. Get back at it. Go back to your home. I'm trying to tell you guys, never underestimate the bus bait.
All right, well, we caught a fish on the micro buzz. That is an achievement, I feel like. But now it is time to switch things up. Now we got to get one of these yum dingers in the mix with one of these ultra red hooks that we got for like two dollars, which is not a bad deal at all for one, two, three, four, five hooks. I think that's a pretty good deal. Now I would fish it weightless, and I know that's what we should do, like because that's all we got from Bass Pro. But here's well, you know what? We can do it weightless. I was just about to say it's so windy it might not work, but you know what? Before we just admit defeat, let's at least try. I don't think this hook was made to be like a Texas rig hook because it doesn't have a very wide gap. So kind of looks a little funky, but we'll give her a shot. Let's go right back out here where we actually got bit. Yes. Can always cast a weightless stick bait so good. I don't even understand how it works. It's like magic. This rod is so freaking heavy and stiff. It's insane. I can't even like put it in words how heavy it is. Look, like when you try to do like a balance test on it, it just like, I have to go all the way out there to make it balance. <laughs> if I touch right here, it's like, boonk. It's literally a meat stick in my hands like any other normal day. Let's see if Big Bertha is still back here. There was a big bass trying to spawn back here. I haven't seen anything move yet. Should probably cast in this hole before I even get any closer. Oop, that ain't it. Tammy Tana, don't you come over here making all kinds of noise now. We're not gonna do that. Oh, dude, there was a bass back there and there it goes. It was way back in there, dude. I don't know if it went out though. Those bass are getting in such shallow water back here. It's crazy. Up oh, there it is. Oh, there's two. There they go. Maybe they won't leave. Let's just be still. Oh, there's another one right there, dude. There's three of them back here and they're all three good size. Oh my gosh. There's no, I can't cast in this. I can't, oh man, it's right there, guys. Let me see what they all try to do. If they all try to leave, they're all heading to that exit, aren't they? Get there. Oh yeah, somebody will see that. If they're going out, they gotta see it. Oh, oh, it's just got eight, it just got eight. Got him, got him. Come out of there. Oh, he snagged. Oh, he came out. He came out. He came out. No, you can't go back in there, buddy. We need you. No, don't go under the log. Oh, my Lord. Here we go. It's not, it's not even the big one. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. We just caught that joker out of, like, no water at all. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That was crazy. No, don't do it. Guys, we just caught three fish back here in this tiny little cove the skinniest water in the pond and look at that that's a nicer one right there he's actually got some head oh these fish are so feisty today jeez this one's actually a pretty decent size one got a big tail got a big noggin probably going to be somebody one day that was on the oh, the yum dinger which is now somewhere else in the red hook but heck yeah guys that's what i'm talking about here I never like to hold my bass out of water that long, you know, obviously to try to not stress them out as much as I can. But this little cove right here, man, we got to figure out a way to like get all this grass and stuff cleaned out. Because if we could, it's just like a bass sanctuary. I don't know why they're getting back there. I guess maybe the water's warm. It's a good spawning location. There's a lot of cover from predators, a lot of cover from people trying to catch them too. You know what's going to be sick back here is frog fishing in the summertime. 100%. On top of this like stuff on the water. It's going to be crazy. The old stick bait always reigns supreme. It's just hard to beat. The brand doesn't matter that much in my experience. I mean, obviously I love lunker logs, but you could catch a fish on probably any stick bait ever made. It's just, it's just a, a superior lure. Now we had a bead on another one. There was another one over here. There was three back there in total. Ooh, what was that? What the heck, Crappy Max? Don't do it to me now. Now we're on them. There it is. I actually increased the brakes and it, <laughs> it got worse. Oh, cheap fishing reels. I've had a love-hate relationship with you for a long time. I love how much you cost. I'm not gonna say I hate the performance because we did catch fish, but I don't like it. What if we just put another one right there by the entrance? Maybe, maybe there's somebody still hanging out. Let's just chuck one out there. See what happens. 
All right, folks, so we ended up switching spots. Actually, neighbor Daryl just pulled up as well. I don't know if you guys saw the video where we floated down the river, almost died several times, but he lended us this little kayak rod right here. Where did you say you got this thing from? Crestview, Florida. Crestview, Florida. It's yeah. a custom little, I mean, look at this thing. It's tiny. It's like, I guess, three foot long. Real short butt on it, which is really nice too. But we took this with us on the kayaks. We weren't able to catch a fish on it. I want to try to catch one of these giant hybrid brim that we have. But you actually stocked them, didn't you? Mm -hmm. The yeah. hybrid brim yeah. about four, five, six years ago? Yeah. yeah. We got this little beetle spin. <laughs> Let's see. We're going to deviate from the challenge for a minute because we actually we've already beaten the challenge, right? Because we only got two lures and we caught fish <laughs> off both. So see if we can catch a giant uh, something else. Oh, it's a little hard to cast because it's so short. Man, these brim are just gone. Doors up. Oh yeah, good call. You know how the swamp be. Yup. Hey, I need to trim this, bro. This this needs to be trimmed badly. Oh my god, get tight. Yep, we're gonna get comfortable ah! with each other. It's all like thorns too. It wouldn't even be bad if it was just a, a bush, but it's literally a bush made of thorns. We're not out of the woods yet. Get tight. Woo! Ah! I'm just so sketchy back here now. Oh yeah, there we go. I want to get in the swamp. See if we can uh, do Neighbor Daryl proud. All right, let's get up on top of the buggy and see what we can see here. Because this is a this is a brim hot spot right here. There's a ton of shiners right there. That's good. I don't know if I see any brim yet. Oh, this dash doesn't feel that sturdy. Oh, there's brown. Yeah, there's brown. Oh, I just completely missed where I was trying to cast by like 40 feet. Now, I see at least one brown, but there's probably a few. There we go. That might be the one. Anybody? Ooh, the shiners are interested. Thanks, shiners were following it. They're probably just looking for a new leader. They see this tiny little fish. They're like, hey, you. Will you be our friend? Oh, oh, dude, he just tried to hit a top water. That was crazy. It was stuck on a plant. It was stuck on the edge of that grass, and a brim just hit it top water. Yeah. Oh, this is going to get, this is going to catch fish. Oh, come on, come on, where they at? They may have gotten a little spooked. Got him. Got him. Got to land him. On Daryl's rod, yes! Tiny little guy, look at this. Oh yeah! My man has a mouth full of beetle spit. <laughs> look at that. Dang. My man was hungry. Man, he ate it good too. So this is actually a hybrid brim right here, hybrid bluegill, and I know that because neighbor Daryl actually stocked these fish. If you take a really close look at their face, this teal stuff right here, that's how you know it's a hybrid. Now, what is it a hybrid of? That's up for debate, but I believe it's like a green sunfish and a, a bluegill brim. So I, I don't know. The green sunfish family is hard to understand sometimes because so many fish species belong to that, or so many fish belong to that one species, if that makes sense. But cool little fish, back to your home. Oh, that's not it. Oh, that ain't it. <laughs> I guess I just have to stand. There we go. That'll be a fish too, if there's any more. Got him. Oh, he took me to the mud, that sorry rascal. The brim are fired up, boys. Drop the poles. They're over there in that shade, dude. Like, they're 100% right there. Got him. Ah, came off. This rod's a little noodly. It's stiff and noodly at the same time. I don't even know how that's possible. But it doesn't have a ton of backbone. There we go. I think, I literally think like if you don't get it in the shade, you're not gonna get bit. That tiny area of shade, they're just like stacked up in there. There's also some deep water right there too. So I know that's where they are. Mm, that's gonna be a fish guaranteed. I have hooked like three already, so they might just be done with me. All right, last cast, come on. Give us a big brim right here. There we go, right where I wanted it to be. All right, folks, it seems fitting to wrap this video in the backyard swamp because we finished it up with a brim off of the old neighbor Daryl special, the nightstick. 
you know, we would never really get the chance to go to Bass Pro because there's not one anywhere near me. The closest one is like two hours in any direction. So it's always fun to go to a Bass Pro. Never been to that Bass Pro ever. So that was really cool. I think it's so much fun showing you guys what you can do with $100 at Bass Pro. You know, it's not like you have to have thousands of dollars to go bass fishing. Sometimes people think that. And this is like an old school video for me. I used to love doing stuff like this. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you did, make sure you're smashing the thumbs up button, get in the comment section. Let me know if you want to see similar content to this or if you want to see something completely different. Also, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel with the bell notification enabled. And for a bonus, you got to enable YouTube notifications on your phone. YouTube makes you jump through about three hoops to support your favorite creators. Not sure why they do that, but that's just the process. Thank you guys for watching. I love you so much. I am out of here.